Welcome, everybody, to Furlough Friday. We've got a very special guest with me today that I'm excited to introduce you to. Of course, I want to say thank you to everybody that supports us. Uh, Hire.com, never prospect again online. Fill your funnel with qualified leads. Don Anthony, my good friend. We've been uh, friends for about four and a half years now. He is in Brazil. No, it's, it's he, long, I think it's longer. We, we were, when was that uh, the ABN thing that we met at? That was like 2015, wasn't it? Yeah, maybe it was. Uh, 2016. 2016, I think. Um, this man is having some, some accidental success online, but has been you know, helping guys learn how to date for quite some time. I mean, years and years and years. Uh, how did you know, date? Yeah. How to date, right? the official, the, the, the official, the like, yeah, the societal narrative is like, I, I tell, you know, like girls and stuff, oh yeah, it's like the movie Hitch, where everyone's trying to find love. But I've been coaching this for over 10 years, and most dudes are just trying to bang a lot of chicks, or bang a bunch of chicks in parallel. Um, eventually they want to settle down, but, and I, and I get guys who are looking for just a girlfriend and this and that, but the truth of the matter is you got to get good with attracting high quality women in general before you can get the full package girlfriend. Guys don't come to me yeah. uh, not getting laid at all. Well, yeah. what, what was interesting to me when I met John is I was actually in a business meeting and he quite literally just cold approached myself and this guy I was meeting with and you were passing out like a business card, weren't you? Like a business yeah, we were, card? Yeah. It was, yeah, we were looking Give me to something. Say, yeah, we were looking to like network a whole bunch because we were we were launching like our first product. This is I'm pretty sure it's 2015 because because my because Josh ended up separating in 2015 off, so I, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure it was is it, it might have even been 2014. So I'm, I think I've known you like six or seven years. It's been yeah, a while. It was, it's, it's definitely been a while. I was I was still in Colorado then, so mm -hmm. it, it's it's been a while. And I, I remember when you came up to me, I, I just noticed your approach and your confidence and your directness, and it was like I this is this is recognizable. I think, I mean, I could be wrong. Any any loser in high school, which I was a loser in high school, big fucking yeah, loser. Was, um, was yeah, you know what? What did you want to learn in high school after you're a loser? Is you know, how do I talk to girls? Because I didn't know how to talk to girls. So I had I had definitely studied up on some forums in college to learn how to even interact with women, and a lot and a lot of how John was carrying himself just was so familiar to me that it, it triggered something in my head to say something's up with this guy right and we just kind of started talking i think i think we ended up going to uh sapphire that night right yeah yeah well, you were like coaching some people well something else happened that was funny the, the uh can we say her name the her cam name the <laughs> i think that was after sapphire but yeah we, we, sapphire? we have a mutual we yeah, have so a mutual uh engagement uh, so, yeah. with, with a woman lily so, yeah, I, who I, is I, it lily yeah, I've been yeah. I've been networking with all the cam stars and the the porn the porn stars the cam girls and porn stars, and one of them was like, "Oh, I was uh, rec I was rated top cam girl last year." Can we say her name or no? Yeah, sure. Why not? I, don't, yeah, I think it was we're fine. Uh, Lily Ortega. So she had like fake triple D's, Latina chick, and um, and it, so we're flirting this and that, and then I'm trying to like get her out of there to bang her, and I ended up like she's like, "No, I can't leave this area here. I can't." But we're flirting a whole bunch. And I'm like, all right, well, come meet my friend Michael because you had your booth set up for all your company stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, he's he manages sites with cam girls and that stuff that you were doing back in the day. And so we brought I brought her over there. We were talking, and then I'm like, let's just go, let's go. And we'll come right back. And I got her to leave, and we got a hotel room. I ended up banging her, and she we were like filming it and all this shit. Like she wanted to like film it, but she had never shown her audience with a dude. So then we were talking about like maybe releasing that to her audience and being like, look, he actually picked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this and that. Then what, it was like the, the day after I, I met her out in the convention for, um, I don't even know how that went down, but she liked me and I was like, yeah, I like you too. We started, we, we ended up dating like long, long distance yeah. dating. Yeah. Cause I had left, <laughs> I had left the conference. Yeah. You guys ended up being boyfriend, girlfriend for, for a while. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a softie. I'm a softie at heart. Can't help it. <laughs> Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, and at that time, you were you were still building this program that you are seeing some some success with right now. Yeah, or was was it a different program? No, that was a different program. So so we just had like a, in in 2015, 2014, 2015, we just had like a digital product. So that was, and we still have like an evolved version of that. 
So that's like ultimate seduction system.com. That's, that's like a lot of my, all the core stuff in my teachings. But the thing that's really like uh, catapulted my business, we're doing an eight week mentorship now where we, I broke down game into like the eight major pieces. So like the first half of the program is focused on like lead acquisition. It's basically just like a sales funnel. Like I'm teaching game like a mm-hmm. sales funnel. So the first week is, is online games. So we like get them pro pictures and then have a team of hot girls that picks the, the best pro pictures and then rates them one to 10. Then we apply aesthetic upgrades to those. I write their bio for them. That gives them a whole generation of high quality and quantity leads from online game from Tinder, Bumble, Hinge. And then I give them the exact message sequences to go from match to phone number. So it's all just copy paste. You know, they have to like just type based on the flow charts. It's an optimized pass to go to, from match to phone number. And then the optimi- optimized pass to go from phone number to date. And so literally the next step for most guys after they get the pro pictures is they now have their schedule packed out with dates. And those are those include public dates. There are two types of the dates. The public dates with like drinks or coffee and then dates straight to the house. And I can get um, over half of the chicks to come straight to the house using the, the tech scripts. So any guy that comes in the program, as long as he gets the pro pictures and, and actually goes and does the swiping and all that, now he's getting a whole stream of girls coming straight to his house and meeting him in public for dates. Then I show him how to run the dates how to close the dates at a very high level, like 80 to 90% you know, success rate, bringing girls home from dates and closing them once they're home. Then we add in more lead flow from cold approach. So I teach them the optimal structure for night game at bars and clubs and daytime game at streets and malls. And then from there, now they have even more lead flow. So now they're getting like 15 to 20 phone numbers a week. Keep plugging in the text threads. And now they have even, or the text scripts, now they have even more dates and more closing situations. And the last piece, at the end of the funnel is how to retain. So a lot of guys want to build up like three or four regulars or, or sometimes more. And so I show them how to build like a harem or rotation. So, and, but then they have this set for life where the funnel is like now open. So now they know exactly what to do, de- what to do, what to say, how to move things forward from, you know, meeting a girl in public or on the apps all the way down to successfully getting her on a date, closing the date and keeping her around. So guys go from like zero to hero. I've, I've gotten, I think the highest level student, and this was a guy that's still on the program, uh, was a th- he had already been with 300 girls. At the, at the time of this recording, I've been with 1,378 is the current count. But I think the time that I met you, it was around like 450 or coming up on 500. Do you remember what I told you at that time? It's coming up on- Under a thousand. You, yeah. you, you always would keep me updated. <laughs> now and then you're checking like, oh, I'm here. Like, oh, that's, that's awesome. So what, what's super interesting, about your thought process, right? As you mentioned at the beginning, it's like a sales funnel. Yep. So that thought process, how did you carry that over when you said, okay, I want to teach a lot of guys how to meet a lot of girls. Are you basically replicating your sales funnel process into seeing the success selling your programs? Um. Not really. Like I don't even have to do very much selling because my because I'm on YouTube. Um, it's like I come across extremely authentic. Like I, I put forth like a straight straight shooting, like extremely authentic, tell it how it is approach, no matter what. And everything's centered around efficiency, effectiveness, optimization. So I'm one of the only coaches that calls out a whole bunch of other coaches. I have like 30 or 40 videos, just like destroying other guys' uh, methods because because like most of the industry, I think it's true in most industries, like the fitness industry and other ones. Uh, most guys are, are just ripping people off. It's like fake experts, either just pure, <clears throat> pure internet marketers that have literally no experience or expertise whatsoever uh, in the field. It, it actually, went, an interesting story, went, it was found out to be there was a guy that made like millions, I think like eight figures like in this industry, and he turned out to be gay, but he was just a very good copywriter, right? And so there, there's all kinds of stuff like that going on. There's guys, interesting. Just, yeah, there's guys just content farmed out to India and then you know, we're making 50K a day, et cetera, just mass pushing uh, lots of paid traffic behind good video sales letters. And I wasn't even aware of this whole side. So I've been coaching this for about 10 years, but I wasn't even aware of this whole internet marketing side until I met Claudio. So who you met. Mm-hmm. Was, I remember Claudio, yeah. So, so Claudio was like a, a platinum ClickBank vendor. I started in the game back in like 2009 was like when I officially started doing mystery method and stuff like that. Um, but I didn't, we didn't create the product until I had Claudio as a client. So I, got, I had Claudio as a client in 2014. He got his first, on the first night of the live training in Vegas, he took home a girl and banged her from a club and he, had, and he had taken all these other courses and nobody had gotten him to do that. And that's always the same story that, 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 I, that I run into over and over. These, 
these other methods just are too comp over complicated. They're not structured. There's too much abstract woo -woo nonsense. So I made everything like very systematized, very algorithmic, not like robotic, but, but there's like it, people have, have likened it to basically like Jordan Belfort's straight line persuasion system. So I'm sure <laughs> the clear path from open to close and they're just assuming compliance and attraction when they hit a point of non-compliance or any objections. I show them how to optimally deal with those situations, both in person and over text. So it's, it's hard not to, you know, you're basically prepared in advance. It's like the Sun Tzu quote from the Art of War, <laughs> the battle's won before yeah. it's fought. So I'm equipping these guys and very quickly, like out of the gate, as I, as I showed you before with, they get the pro pictures, they plug in the scripts. Now they have lots of girls coming to the house. It's not rocket science to teach them how to bang a girl once she shows up at their house, right? So these guys start executing at a level, you know, probably like the top 0.5% or, or let, you know, even even greater than every other dude in the world within a couple of weeks. And so that's pretty revolutionary. So it's kind of like, I'm, I'm yeah, I mean, results, yeah. results matter. What, what's interesting to me is your, your system, the way you think about dating is the way I think in a lot of our community and people watching think about starting new business, actually. Yep. Like, business so uh what were you doing before you were helping people get more dates and meet more women yeah so i come i come from like a super analytical background i did a double major in computer science and philosophy i did a double master's in human computer interaction which is basically cognitive psychology applied to software and systems and i did a master's in philosophy of cognitive science so i had this philosophy psychology computer science background and then I um, ended up working for five years for Lockheed Martin, which is a defense contractor, the biggest defense contractor for the U.S., working on ballistic missile defense. So I was a systems engineer by, by title, and my job was to optimize speed of response time and accuracy of response against a nuclear, biological, chemical missile attack on the U.S. or our allies. So I've always <laughs> had a deal. Yeah. yeah, so I've had it, and then I just went to showing guys how to bang as much hot pussy as possible. So. <laughs> But I've always had a knack for like optimizing skill games. I used to play pro poker. I used to compete in chess tournaments. I, I used to day trade stocks in high school. Like, like basically back in high school, I was like one of the nerdiest guys in the whole high school. Was raised all religious, planning on waiting till marriage to have sex. Didn't even kiss a girl till college, all, all that fucking garbage. And I was just like studying math and science and philosophy and like playing video games, playing chess, playing fucking poker and all this stuff. And so... I, I, but I was always very good at, at optimizing skill games very quickly. So I got very good at poker very fast, very good at chess very fast, very good at like computer programming very fast. You know, anything that, that had any kind of skill game component. And once I learned about the game stuff, I realized it's no different. So there's like, there's better ways to text than others. There's better ways to run your interactions than others. There's better ways to run your dates, better ways to keep the girl around. So the whole uh, past 15 to 20 years was like this giant optimization problem. And when I plot out my results progression, it's literally an exponential graph. So it took like 10 years to hit the first 100 girls from, what, from the point I lost my virginity, basically from uh, 2002 when I lost my virginity till I, in June 2012 is when I hit the first 100. Then it became about 100 to 150 a year. The best year was 246 new girls closed that I mean, he's having sex with. I never tracked non-sex hookups, unfortunately. So it basically I pulled like a nine from the club, got a blowjob, never ended up banging or didn't even count. It's not even reflected in the... In the metric but uh the best year is 246 and i think it could, it could go higher but it's you know it's it's diminishing returns it, start, it starts to take over other areas of your life and that, that year the, the 246 it was like i was skipping the gym and like not eating properly and not sleeping properly. you know it was just like balls to the wall mayhem yeah yeah and and during Let's that talk time, about that i mean yeah. you've made a lot of changes to your health since we last met too yeah. what, how long have you been without a drink now yeah so I, I got caught up in all the fucking alcohol shit because i was well when i first started off in all this i still had a lot of social anxiety i grew up with like general anxiety social anxiety a lot of the problems that that riddle someone that has an analytical mind it's like a double-edged sword where you have hyper analytical powers in a sense but then it's a social detriment so i was taking care of that largely with alcohol drinking pretty much daily or very close to daily for about 15 years and it started to become pretty prob problematic in the in the final years so I tried a couple times to I think like maybe three or four times to quit and, and made it like 60 days or 90 days and ended up going back to it because I was thinking about it I was in I was living in all the all the biggest party cities and I was going out to the club <clears> a lot <throat> and I was drinking on dates and I was drinking when I had girls to the house 
So it got to the point where I was drinking throughout the whole day. I lived in, in Vegas, Miami, and, and New York City. I lived in Puerto Rico, uh, Portugal, Ukraine, Poland. Um, I'm in Brazil now for the past year and a half, living with three hot girls in a, in a two-story penthouse here in, in Florianopolis. Um, but I, just from being in all these party situations and all these pickup situations, there's almost 14,000 phone numbers in my phone right now. Um, it, the alcohol just kind of got the best of me in, the, in those final years. where It was a problem for a long time, but I ended up going to uh, an outpatient rehab program where I was just attending group sessions, and that was in 2019. But now I'm coming up on almost two years not drinking. So, and, and it hasn't really impacted the results that much. It's, it's still like I'm coming out. I told you I'm like two... I arrived in Brazil at 1,179 chicks, and then now I'm at uh, 1,378. I guess it's actually one away. So there was a, a new chick recently. So it's one away from 200 girls in the past year and a half in Brazil. So it's not that big of a deal. It's it's kind of nicer to be on, e- on even keel because I would a lot of times drink way too much, <laughs> most times, and then uh, end, up, end up saying and doing stupid shit and like almost getting in fights. And, you know, and then I was just sick of feeling like shit all the time and, you know, it's not good for health. And I, and I, and before Brazil, I was in Poland and I had like a ultrasound and they were like, dude, you're starting to get fatty deposits on your liver. If you keep drinking like this, you're going to have some serious health problems in five years. So I'm going to be 38 this year, but I was like, all right, that's, that's enough. So I basically cut that out completely. And, uh, like I said, coming up on two years with that, but yeah, now my fitness has improved a lot. My, you know, just, just the way I feel and, and look has improved a lot. So, yeah, you've been in the gym quite a bit. Yep. Yeah, I'm going with the trainer yeah. five times a week. Yeah. That's awesome. So, out of all the, I, I'm curious to know, out of all the cities you've lived in, which one has been your favorite? This one by far, Brazil. Like, yeah. so I arrived here like five weeks before all the pandemic stuff started in February 2020. And I was with a couple other advanced friends in the game that came down here with me. And we just originally came for three weeks for Carnival. And we went to this, I'm in Florianopolis, which I had heard from a variety of circles around the world that has the hottest girls in the world. And I was like, all right, I got to see what this is all about. Cause it's, it's South Brazil. So they have really good genetics and there's a bunch of European influence. So you have a lot of like European faces mixed with Brazilian bodies. So it's like perfect combination. And we went to this venue called P12. They say pay dozy in, in Portuguese and it's 5,000 capacity open air during carnival and it was like a costume party they call it like festa de fantasias it's basically like a halloween party in the u.s and so they imagine five thousand people at least half were chicks but it seemed like more than half so you're, you're talking like 2500 girls i would say conservatively like 70 percent of them were above an eight it was it was like something that's a pretty seen. good it's it's like something I, it's like something i'd never seen before and the other 30 percent weren't even that ugly it was like like mostly like seven plus it was like very rare to see a girl like below a seven and I was like, me and my friends were like, what the fuck? Like, we, we'd never seen, like, we've been all around, all around the world in Kiev and, and Warsaw and, like, never seen anything like this. And uh, and the chicks were, like, super receptive and super cool and super fun. I, I remember during that party, I made out with, like, 14 chicks. And I was, like, you know, I was, I was just, like, I was, like, overloaded. I was, like, I don't know who to try to take home. Yeah, I've, I've heard about Carnival. I was, uh if if covid didn't happen I, I had planned on actually living in brazil for a couple months and oh, yeah. one of those months was going to be february and uh you know covid covid came and put the clamps down so is what it is um, yeah is what it is but there's so many uh like the bell curve shifts so much there's the, the hot girls are in such large supply that you just they're just, and they're just so receptive and so cool like very different than when you approach an american super hot chick and a lot of them have like you get like reverse catfish like almost every time if you meet a girl on Tinder. Like the, like the girl, the girl will like show up with just like a perfect ass or like perfect body, and you couldn't tell. Her, and you couldn't tell from like the pictures. So. Uh, so when you moved, when you moved to Florinopolis, where were you at with your your coaching and your product? Like, was it was it doing better? Like, where were you at? Like, in terms of success. Well, this, this eight week mentorship program I launched a little over a year ago. So. I was mostly just doing live boot camps, which I like. I would go on a tour maybe once a year. I would do like, we did a tour in 2019 where it was like Vegas, LA, Miami, New York, London, with like four or five days in each city, and I, so it was kind of like like a band tour or some shit like that. And I would teach like five or six guys on each program, uh, usually with another coach. I would, or, or we ran like a 10-person program in Vegas. I brought a bunch of coaches with me, and 
so I would do those and then I would, I would sell my digital products through my YouTube. Um, but once the pandemic happened, the, you know, that kind of, uh, fucked up a lot of the live training stuff. And so I was looking, around, I was looking around and, uh, started looking to like the high ticket space and, and the whole like mentorship model. So like the eight week program, and it's not, not just was that more advantageous from, from a business perspective, but it also is way better for the client because the three day bootcamp model has a whole ton of limitations. There's only so much you can teach a guy in three days and he doesn't have enough time to go and run, get into all these situations. So if you spread it over two months, now he's going on lots of dates and he can run into problems and you can fix them on the, on the four calls per week. He's, he can get into a bunch of closing situations, run into problems. He can get into a bunch of texting problem situations in three days. It's just kind of like boom, boom, boom. And then it's done. And so, uh, by spreading across two months, it allows me to properly train them on all the optimizations of my system. And basically week by week, it, it goes like this. It's like online game week one, uh, nightclub game, basically in bars and clubs weeks two and three daytime game week four texting is week five and I'm working all the leads. Uh, week six is how to run your public dates. Week seven is how to close at the house and week eight is how to retain and keep the girls around and, it, and you don't have to wait. Like, so I basically give them the 80, 20 on, on those other later parts, like how to run the date, how to, how to close, how to retain. I give them that stuff right up front. So they don't have to wait until the later part of the system and bottleneck the whole way through the course. So that's just the order we go through in the official training, but we start with the online game and, and plugging into the automatic texting scripts so they can just, anyone can generate a regular supply of dates. And closing situations so the the success rate's extremely high we've, we've done stuff that's like never happened nothing even close uh in the history of the community so a lot of first of all a lot of the guys are closing one to two new girls a week even starting as a virgin which it comes let me ask you this yeah. when when guys come to you what's their typical end goal are, are they wanting to find a girlfriend or just learn how to talk to girls or go straight volume what's what are you hearing from your students, most guys, yes, yeah, so I've been coaching this ten years. Most guys want to just have more options and want to have better skills, so that equates to being able to sleep with more girls. So, most guys like there's there's a lot a lot of confusion. It's a lot of like, what do I do? Is is one of the biggest problems. Okay, even if I get up the guts to approach the girl, what do I do next? Okay, if I get her phone number, what do I do after that? How do, what do I what should I be texting her? If I if I set up a date, what do I do on the date? Or, or how do I get the girl to come back home with me from the date? How do I get the girl to have sex with me once I bring her back home? It's a lot of like, what do I do next type stuff. And the problem is, is that the average guy is doomed without proper instruction because, which exists hardly anywhere. And that's why I attack most of the guys in the industry because most of the people in the industry actually complicate the problem further. So that they teach them a bunch of shitty stuff that doesn't work and makes them act like a weirdo. And then you have a lot of guys putting in time, effort, and money over years and not seeing any return or, or seeing their progress even go backwards. So, um, you know, so, so my first order of business is to like plug them into all the optimizations and I designed the training to be very plug and play. So it's, here's all the online game messaging. It's already done for you. Here's all the texting. It's already done for you. Let's get the pro pictures. I make the profile with you. That's done. Right. And then here's the structure for how to run your date, close your date. And I give them uh, hidden camera videos as well. So there's like 30 hidden camera night game pickups, from start to finish where it's like hidden camera, hidden microphone. They get to see and hear everything I do from start to finish in order to take the girl home. And, uh, there's like 10 full length dates as well. So they can see, here's what I'm talking about on the dates. Here's how I move forward. Here's how I deal with objections to come home with me. Here's how I sexualize, et cetera. And 30 day game pickups as well. So that demonstrates everything in action in real time they can pause and rewind. So it's really hard. And there's a Facebook group, uh, where they can ask questions 24 seven. I answer them all personally. And then the four calls per week um, that are two hours each. So what, what's really happening is like this iterative optimization process where they plug in like with that exponential curve of my own personal results, they're plugging into the steep part of the curve. And then when they hit a block or weak point, I clear those things away on the calls, progress further, hit a block, weak point, I cleared away. And so we're just fast tracking them to optimal strategy and everything's kind of viewed through quantitative metrics so we can measure actual results. It's not just, oh, do you think you're doing better? Oh, I think so. You know, all, the, all this fucking woo woo nonsense that, and I'm a very scientific and analytical dude. So we look at, okay, you went on five dates, you only brought home one or two girls. You brought home five girls, you only closed one or two or zero. Where are you going wrong? It should be four out of five that you bring home. It should be four out of five that you, that you close. So then we look in, okay, it's usually they're skipping steps. So we, we dig in and analyze 
where things are breaking down. We just in, use induction, basically like, okay, I went on a few dates, I'm running into this problem. Okay, here's how you fix it. And since I've coached so many guys now, I know the major problems that almost every guy runs into, and I know how to fix them very fast. And I even, you know, like loaded that into the training part because I know I know which problems are going to run into. So I, I fix a lot of the problems that they're going to run into before they even run into them. So that's why it works so well. It's basically like mad mad scientist, uh, you know, unleashed in, into it. I think I could have t- yeah. t- gotten really far with poker or really far with chess or, or even with the, the missile stuff. Um, I made some key improvements well, um, in there too. But it's interesting. So. If you weren't doing what you're doing now, what do you think you would be doing? Would you be selling something online? Would you be working at Lockheed? What, what do you think? I don't think I would have stayed in the corporate environment for, for a very long time. I, I hated the whole, um, you have to stay here from these hours. These hours that, that kind of feels like, you know, like jail or something in a way. Like you can't leave or you'll be fired. So even if you finish, I always finish the work quickly because I, I was bright you know, genetically. And, and um, like I read, a, I read a cognitive science book that said most of your intelligence is determined at birth by your genetics. And so I just got a good luck of the draw where I was able to analyze things and work quickly. So in the corporate world, I was always able to finish the work very fast. And then you're kind of, you know, sitting on your fucking twiddling your thumbs, sitting on your ass and uh, passing the time, <laughs> um, which is when I, I, I did a lot of like health and, and longevity research during those years to, on the side. But I went from Lockheed to IBM, the little tech career that I had. I went from Lockheed to IBM. They, they gave me like a 50% raise, and I, it was 100% from home. So that, that allowed me to do more of this shit because I had uh, I only had to work like four or five hours to get all the work done for the week. And then there was no commute. And then I, I did brief stints at HP and Sony, Hewlett Packard and Sony PlayStation, and got fired from both basically for coming in late, missing meetings, just because I was doing the game stuff. And after, yeah. HP, after HP fired me, I basically just went all in at this and was like, you know, fuck the fuck the corporate world in the in the tech career. Um, I never liked having a boss or anything, anyways, or having set hours to be in an office. So I, I was starting to dabble in affiliate marketing um, back around the time that I met Claudio because he was kind of it was kind of horrifying at first because I was like, I remember he was like debating taking my Vegas program. Like, here's all these testimonials, and he's like, well, those could be fake, and I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, oh, a lot of people make fake testimonials. They hire people on these sites. And I was like, dude, that sounds fucking crazy. And he's like, look at this company. Look at this company. Look at this company. He's like, they don't have any skills. They just are good at marketing. And it was like horrifying that uh, yeah, this, yeah. this craft that I've perfected uh, basically doesn't mean shit how good the quality of it is because these other guys were promising things that I could never deliver to clients. Like they were saying like um, – any, like they'll say like 76% of the people that go through this system have their first threesome in, in a, within a few days. I can't guarantee something like that. Uh, like the real stats aren't, aren't glamorous and attractive from a marketing perspective. Like I tell guys I close 10% of my phone numbers. Like when I hit 1,000 girls, I had about 10,000 phone numbers in the phone. Now I'm at uh, 1,378 girls. There's almost 14,000 phone numbers in the phone. I always show I always show on my channel basically if you see the, uh, the amount of – Oops, if you can see the, uh, the amount of contacts there. So 13, a lot of contacts. Yeah. 13, oh, you know how many I have in mind. Most but yeah, of mine are business. But yeah, nobody wants to hear, oh, only, only 10% of the phone numbers that I get will close, and that's at a high level. But that's the real stats. So what bothered me is that these marketers could go on and claim anything, and it, and it, had, it didn't have to have any bearing to reality. And there's other coaches that say, like, oh, I get 100% of my students late. That's bullshit, too. Right, like you can never guarantee that, that you'll get a guy late on like a three day program or ever, right? It's you can make high probabilities, but you know, so it, it was hard uh, to compete with these guys, both because they had like these big marketing machines behind themselves, but also because they were making all kinds of unrealistic claims. And the, unfortunately, the consumer was making the buy decision before they got to see the content and before they got to see if the content worked. Right, and then it's very easy because most of the guys don't take action anyways, and they can say, "Oh, maybe that system would have worked," but you know they were just too lazy, or they, or the, or the those course creators were just saying, "Oh, you know, uh, you, you know, you just didn't try hard enough," and, and, and try to blame the the consumer when in fact the system is just, is just total shit. So yeah. that 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 always kind of bothered me, but that's you know that's just it that that's just it is what it is. Um, so I started to over the past couple of years incorporate not fucking 
bullshit lying tactics like they were using, but but try to get um, you know more more reach and stuff like that. I told you the I grew my YouTube not not a whole lot, but I went from maybe 12k subs at the beginning of the year to like 23k subs now, just by putting out daily videos. Since the beginning of the year, I, I put out daily videos, and now I'm about to transition to to twice a day output. Um, I think that's interesting. I, I, mm -hmm. For you, you've seen the most success by just putting out authentic content. Yep. Yeah, and, I, and what I hear time and time and time again is a lot of guys say, hey, I went and, and looked at every other coach. Hey, I got on calls and, and spoke to all these guys. And you, by far, seem, number one, to know what you're talking about the most. Number two, like that you're just full straight shooter and, and there's no BS, whereas these other guys, their BS detectors were going off everywhere. And that that they really like believe that I'm like getting all these results because I show I show more proof than all the other coaches combined as well. That's the other big thing that I have going. I can show like hundreds of pictures with girls in hookup situations, you know, not like fucking naked, you know, but like the girls in, in bras and panties and in apartments, stuff like that. With me, like taking pictures of me in the mirror and blur their face, I can show that stuff. I have like hundreds of hours of the hidden camera pickups that we did. Um, you know, I have more guys vouching for me, more of the advanced guys vouching for me than anywhere else. Yeah, social proof. You have yeah. a lot of social proof. Yeah, so yeah, I have like a video over an hour long, like proof that I slept with over a thousand girls because it's a constant. People think it just sounds ridiculous. Oh, wow. It does, it does, it does sound wild. ridiculous, I mean, and, it's, and it's out of people's yeah, no. realities. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that's a lot. A lot. Yeah. And that's, you know, you've dedicated your life to it at yeah, this yeah, point and now you're yeah, it's, it's, which all is, rel it's all relative like i remember back when i was like a, in my third year of college i'd only been with three chicks and i found out this girl i really liked to be with nine dudes and it bothered me for months it's like how the fuck does someone sleep with nine people and then i you know when i started getting a little better with stuff i set 100 as a lifetime goal and i thought it was impossible and it's not all about just racking quantity like i i often um, ran big rotations of like six to 12 girls in the more recent years, like 10 to 15 girls. Like in Brazil, there's like 15 regulars and I, pro <laughs> I prioritize a lot of them over, over new girls. So, you know, like let me ask you this. You touched on something that was interesting to me and I'm sure it's interesting to other people. If not, uh, at least, you know, uh, I'll, I'll get an understanding of this, but you said when you were in college, right, it's all perspective, right? Yeah. How has this journey, change your perspective on sexuality um in, in what sense like like relationships or like uh just dating or yeah i mean let's let's talk relationships i think sexuality is is pretty broad but you know when you were in college your perception on sexuality was if somebody's been with more than you know five guys oh my god it's, it's a horrible thing and then you know, we grow into being more accepting for you. You are treading waters that most men have not, unless they're athletes or celebrities yeah. or something like that. Well, and you're I just, think, I think you I'm know. even far, far more advanced than a lot of these guys that are. are yeah, you're, you're, there's, there's no doubt about it, right? I mean, it's, it's a craft that you I hear. Prefer. I hear them saying rap songs like, oh, like got four girls in a day, like four new girls in a day. Like my record in a day was eight new girls. <laughs> My, my record in a year was 246. Oh, but, but the question, so for you, how has your perception on, relate, let's say, relationships changed over time in your journey pick up or dating, um, dating so, so, yeah, like back in, like, back in college like when I didn't know shit, basically I thought that, like, the better, the, the more stuff you did for a girl and the nicer you were to a girl, that there would be a correlation to, like, how much she liked you and appreciated you and stuff like that. So I would be like, okay, when, when can I get this girl flowers or a bear or like chocolates or when can I do this for nice for her, do this nice for her. And if she got upset at me for any reason, I would always just take it and apologize because I didn't want to create conflict and lose the girl. And, and if she fucked up, I wouldn't want to, by the same token, I wouldn't want to like call her out and create confrontation. So it was more like being a people pleaser and that's like pussy repellent, right? So what I came to grow into is not, it's not about being an asshole all the time. It's, the big difference is, um, number you can still treat them well, but you can't be like a pussy. You can't be a pushover. You can't be spineless because they'll they'll drop you instantly for that. Or they'll lose respect for you, and, um, very quickly over that. So I'll treat them nice, but there's a big difference between like nice and like kissing their ass, right? So I'll basically treat treat them nice until they fuck up, and then basically crack down, and 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 they have to know that you're capable of like dropping them and all that stuff, right? And and that you have other options. But I try to present myself as like the best option they're ever going to meet, right? Without having to like prove it in any way. I've just like very carefully 
uh, structured like every aspect of myself that I'm presenting to them. Like, like when I meet a new girl, I say, hey, like, I used to DJ before I got into all the heavy seduction stuff. I say, hey, like uh, I play these electronic music events. Like I have videos of me DJing big events and stuff like that. I show them that stuff. I talk about how I lived in like over 30 countries all around the world. And it's all done without bragging. So it's just like uh, back like little elements of stories. Right. But I'll talk about um, how I run a company and how I do martial arts and, you know, go to the gym, and eat healthy food and some of that. But it's not so much just about about like listing off like a resume of, of traits. It's about like how I carry myself as well. Like I think like the big mindset that most guys need is to just assume you got the girl before you even have met her. Like before you ever cold approach a girl, the mindset should be, oh, I got this girl. No problem. And if I don't get her and she doesn't like like what I put forth who cares because there's plenty that that will and plenty that currently do and plenty that have so um it's just about like bringing your a game every time so I don't I, I tell guys in the first module of my training there's like a brick wall you're at 100 out of 100 and there's a brick wall and if if um you, you get like negative reactions or insults or anything like this it doesn't impact your confidence levels or impact your view of yourself like most of my students they get at least in the beginning or before they come to me, they, they get deflated. You can never escape negative reactions or some girls not liking you or, or digging what you bring to the table. There's going to be girls that really have boyfriends and husbands where you're not their type, where, um, you know, where they have like, um, they're in a bad mood or, or for whatever the reason, whatever the reason is, who gives a shit? I, I look at those things in a positive light. Like, okay, it's, it wouldn't have worked out with that girl. Anyways, who gives a shit? There's going to be a hotter, cooler girl right around the corner. And I'll be, you know, so most guys will, they'll, they'll take that really personally. And then they let that handicap their confidence and their view of themselves. And then they go in on the next girl thinking they suck. And this can carry over from night to night. This can carry over from week to week or month to month. And it starts to become a self-fulfilling prophecy very quickly because uh, they come in expecting, yeah, they come in expecting um, to be rejected. And then, the, and then that's what happens. Cause they don't, if you don't believe in your own product, so to speak, the girl never will. Right. And so, so that principle that you're talking about, I'm sure, is a theoretical question, or maybe I'm being, you know, a bit facetious, but I'm sure it has helped you in other aspects of your life, oh, developing yeah. that sort of mindset. Yep. Talk to me a little bit about that, and talk to me too about how you've seen some of your students progress in other areas of their life after shifting that mindset of just of, of being valuable rather than pleasing and then having this self-fulfilling feeling prophecy that you're not enough. Yeah. So I, I like to use the analogy on my channel all the time of like, if you went into a car dealership and you wanted to buy a car and the, and the salesman was like, Hey, we have this like rusty piece of shit with a bunch of like parts broken and, and the windows bashed out and, and it's just a piece of shit. You want to buy it. Right. So like, that's how most guys are presenting themselves to the girl. She, she doesn't know. I always tell them on the live program, she doesn't know. This one guy, he's like, I'm a virgin. And so the girls respond negatively. And they respond positively to you because you've been with hundreds of girls. And I was like, dude, we don't have the number of girls we've been with, like, plastered on our forehead on a post-it note. <laughs> the girl doesn't know how, many, how good you are with women or how many women you've been with. It's all about how you carry yourself. So if you, if you go in, right, acting like the man, it's probably going to work out. You know, it has a much better chance of working out. Versus like if I went in and started acting like weak and passive and like, you know, unsure of myself and this and that, just because I've been with a lot of girls, it doesn't give me like a free pass to, to start, bang, you know, to still be getting hot girls. I, I have to bring like, you know, the, this fully confident version to the table. And then he ended up getting a make out and a pull. And you met my old business partner, Josh. We were, we were joking around that he was like the coolest virgin in the club that night. And, and it's cool because it's literally just that one little shift where you're now presenting like this shiny new Lambo or whatever that's that's attractive and appealing. And it doesn't mean that everyone's going to like it. And I tell guys like, look at like door to door sales or cold calling. You can be the best salesman in the world. You can never get away from people slamming the door in your face, telling you to fuck off, all this stuff. That's just part of the game. So I tell guys to have realistic expectations that you're going to run into negative reactions. But I show them how to present the best version of themselves and then how to move things forward successfully and how to deal with the negative reactions to, to potentially still move forward um, so that they don't take that stuff personally. But yeah, the mindset is, is very, very key. There's tons of strategic elements, but that's kind of at the, at the top of the hierarchy. And that kind of stuff will, will carry over to like how much your friends respect you, like getting promotions at work, getting more respect and, and being closer with, with uh, family members and stuff like this. So the, the typical guy will come on 
uh, I get a lot of like white collar workers or guys that are doing decently in business uh, can, that can afford a training like this, and they will, um, you know, they'll be very shy, awkward, have have different confidence problems and, and negative views, and, and just be making lots of strategic mistakes everywhere. <coughs> And very quickly, I plug them into Optimal Strategy. I get a stream of girls coming to their house and meet them on public dates. They start getting closes. And then it's like a feedback loop. There's nothing like uh, yeah. enforce, enforcing confidence than demonstrable empirical evidence. Oh, look, I banged a, a seven. Okay, like that's in stone now, right? Like anytime they go like lower quality, oh, I banged a girl hotter than this. It's not a big deal. And so then they start leveling up their quality, right? Like I had a, a 28-year-old virgin from the UK. He had taken six other training courses with people in the industry. Nobody got him laid. Nobody was even really getting him dates. Came on my program. He's extremely depressed, skeptical, ready to give up on, the, on girls altogether. I said, dude, after we get pro pictures, you're going to have a lot of dates. There's no way around it. And, and on week uh, two, he had seven dates, actually. I remember it was more dates than I had because I'm repeating a lot of the same girls. And then I showed him how to run the dates and close the dates and do the cold approach. And he ended up with eight total girls. He lost Virginia on day four, but he ended up with eight total girls by the end of the eight weeks. I think one of the weeks he had three, but on average it was about one girl a week. And I remember on week five, he went out with his first eight and he got a make out, but he like hardcore fucked it up and he was all rattled. And he, just because, and I see this, I've seen this all the way through. Once the guys like leveling up their quality, there's like an adjustment period because you can't be icy cool out of the gate, you know, like around a girl that, you know, that's hotter than you're used to. Right, so they start they start deviating, deviating off optimal strategy and, and, and overanalyzing. Oh, I don't think I want to make this joke because she's too hot and she might be offended. Oh, I don't want to say this. Do you, do you teach it all? And is it because this for me, as I've grown into being the man I am today and just you know dealing with growth, do you teach it all that the, your students' number of girls should not be an association of their value? Instead, like they should just value themselves and the rest will come. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So I, and I tell guys in the beginning, too, I'm like, list out a bunch of positive qualities. Like when I write their Tinder bios, I'm like, send me your cool experiences, your interests, your skills, and your hobbies. And then I, I write up like a rock star profile for them. And I tell them, like, most of you got, you know, you guys have cool stuff going on. There's cool stuff you bring to the table. There's cool stuff that you've accomplished. You shouldn't, yeah, you shouldn't judge your worth on how many girls you've been with or your ability to get girls, right? You have to be fully confident in what you bring to the table and own it unapologetically. And women will respond to that. And they're like, well, what if I'm too old? What if I'm too short? What if I'm too ethnic? And I'm not a coach that says everyone's on the same playing field. That's complete bullshit. That's yeah, it's not a thing. It's yeah. not a thing. But yeah. at the same time, it's much less of a factor than they think. So I tell them to optimize what's in their control. You can't change your height or your ethnicity or anything like that. And then let the chips fall where they may, right? Okay, this girl doesn't like the fact that you're shorter shorter than her. Who gives a shit? There's tons of other girls that aren't going to care about that. Or like this girl thinks this 45-year-old is too old to be, you know, talking to a girl that's 20, but there's other tons of other 20-year-olds. I get get guys in their 40s and 50s all the time banging 18 and 19-year-olds in my programs, and they always come on, oh, these girls are, you know, I'm past, I'm I'm not able to get girls like that because I'm too old. No, you're not. You're just too old for, for some little subset that you shouldn't give a shit about, right? So it's all about, you know, learning the proper strategy, having the mindset that you're the man and all that stuff and, and being able to have the emotional resilience to handle negative reactions, which you're never going to get away from, right? And, they, and these internet marketers, one of the products said, uh, you'll never even have to approach anymore. The girls will come to you, right? So they're just making... Is that a thing? No. <laughs> you sure? You sure? Yeah. Uh, that would be nice. No, I think, I think, yeah, you know, I, I think there's, there's, it, there's an aspect to that that could be true. It depends on the situation. It depends yeah, on. What they're, what they're talking about is like a main strategy. Like you'll never have to go up to the girls anymore. Like just just do these uh, clever little tricks, and like all of a sudden, all the girls are going to be, uh, of, you know. So no, nah, no, nah, nah, that's not a thing. Yeah. Be you and own your. You, you, you mentioned own your authenticity. Yep. With what you got, be unapologetic about it. Yep. I think that's but, important. But after these guys get some, for, what's that? For you and what you've currently built, it has been very organic from the beginning. Yeah. I remember when we first met, like you said, you weren't an internet marketer. You're like, I know how to do this. You should buy my program because I know how to do this. And I'll tell you exactly how to do it. Yeah. I think... You've, you've carried that out. I mean, Claudio, we were going to do a bunch of affiliate marketing at the time. Mm-hmm. 
And now you just said, let me package up all my knowledge and give it to the community and it's going to reciprocate. And, and it's worked, right? You've, you've given the goodwill out and it's came to you and you said, yeah, let me show you how to do it and put you through the actual program and you know, get you to a place where you want to be. Um, yep. On some other stuff, uh, you know, you're, you're living in Brazil. Uh-huh. Besides the women, because I've, I've heard the women are great and I haven't been there yet, but it's... Uh, it looks good. It looks great. What's your favorite part about living in Brazil? Um, definitely the girls, obviously. But <laughs> besides the girls, the ratio of the—I mean, in Florianopolis, it's it's an island, so there's 42 beaches here that are all like picturesque. You know, it's beautiful uh, scenery. It's a lot of nature and shit like that. Um, I don't know. The the people are just a lot cooler. Like, I feel like in the U.S., I've lived in enough countries now to see the the major differences in the U.S. A lot of people are just caught up in like capitalism and, and just having bigger and better shit and, and and they sacrifice a lot of the you know like human social connections and stuff as a result and, and just more about like you know like judging people and and the, well, who, what is what you know people when people are dancing at the club for instance i remember i lived in england and everyone's just dancing like fucking crazy right and just like like retarded almost and it, but no one judges them. It was, it's just all cool and it was like very, like a freeing experience where people could just like act and be themselves and without a whole bunch of judgment. Whereas in the US, you know, there's so much like, what is this person doing? What is that person doing? How do I compare to these people, this and that? And what I've, and what I've seen like in the US is like, the women have become way more masculine and the men have become way more feminine. And there's like this kind of, you know, evening evening out where it's it's, it's a sad state of affairs. I, I found that the, the chicks in like Eastern Europe and South America, they're just a lot more elegant, feminine, sweet less disrespectful play less games um you can just like interact with them there's not like all this like fronting and like bullshit whereas and, and a lot of that too is a cultural thing you know in the western nations but a lot of it is um the bell curve just shifts so hardcore like in the u.s the the majority of women are overweight right so the 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 whatever percentage that are majority of people are overweight yeah, yeah i mean it, it's like a, a there's a lot of unhealthy people in the united states yeah no doubt about that yeah, so the the genetic factor, but just with people, people care more about fitness and stuff like that, um, and and they're just cooler. Girl, I just, I just think that like externally and internally, the girls just blow the other ones out of the water. But yeah, the, so the girls, the the beaches, I do like my Muay Thai and my um, uh, training at the gym. So I have like that stuff set up with trainers. Uh, we have like a cool spot where we have three girls living in the house, and so we have you know it's like on demand threesomes and foursomes. But then we also bring girls from the clubs. We also have a bunch of side girls that can come over and do group stuff with us. And then I have like, uh, it's like 12 or 13 of just for me one-on-one on the side. And so, and guys are always like, how do you get them to agree to this? And it's basically uh, like with the original main one, right? Like she's like, she's an engineer, but she's also really hot. She's in a bunch of videos on my, on my channel. Um, she like just wanted one-way monogamy. She had never had a threesome before. Um, and we had our first threesome May of last year, and now we we're adding them up on a whiteboard. There's almost like 50 new threesomes that we've had since then. And the other, uh, we had another girl moved into the house like five months ago, and now she had her first threesome and a bunch of foursomes. And now we had like a bunch of five sums the past month. And because think about it, if we bring two girls home from the club, there's already two girls here living here. Well, the, the third one's about to move in. There's like a blonde chick, there's two brunettes and a blonde. Um, but basically, you know, any girl we bring home that turns into like now it's going to be a five sum or six sum. Um, but but I tell them like, you know, monogamy isn't for me. Like, the girls are in the house are the most important to me. But I have to see these other girls on the side. That's how it is. Monogamy is not natural. It's only like five percent of mammals are monogamous. All the cheating and, and all this other stuff that goes on in divorces are a result of being, you know, put into the situation that's not natural. That doesn't mean I don't care about you guys. So I have like the emotional strong connection with, with the girls that are basically like the girlfriends that live in the house. And then we have all these side girls that I'll see like once a week each or whatever. And and I just basically tell them, so the whole, the whole trick is like, you get them really into you. And then I say like, here's this living situation I have basically. And the best ones, I'm like, hey, I want you to be a part of this. And they're like, you know, I have to share you with these other girls. I'm like, yeah, pretty much. But you were sharing with me before, you just didn't know about it. Or I do tell them at some point and they know about it, but, but then I try to bring them in and I say like, by the way, you can't see any other guys. And by the way, I'm going to be seeing a bunch of other girls on the side, but it's not going to be like an emotional connection. It's going to be girls I, 
I bang on the side basically for variety. And I tell them about my company and I'm like, you know, we can go out and pick up girls together and I can, you know, so they enjoy all that shit too. I teach them like how to pick up chicks and it's like 10 times easier for a chick, obviously, because most objections that girls have to come home with, with a dude are, they want to make sure he's high value enough and that he's safe and that things aren't going to be awkward or that, or, you know, any kind of danger. But when you have other hot girls with you that have already approved of you, then you short circuit those, those approval circuitries for value and safety and stuff like that. So it's like super easy. Like we, we just did a video on YouTube explaining a five sum we pulled just two girls from the club and what? like the girl, they just connect with the girls from the house right away. They're fun, hot girls. And then we just say, Oh, we live close by. You guys should come. And then we just in a bang all of them. We put a stripper pole in the house. There's multiple jacuzzis, multiple barbecues in the house. There's like a big terrace. We're on the water. And so we have parties here and shit and girls that we've already banged bring their friends. So there's always all these girls hanging out here and I banged all of them. There's like barely ever any dudes here. Um, except for, like, <laughs> except for like close friends of mine that would never like hit on the chicks and stuff like that. Um, you know, but, but guys are always like, why, why would they sign up for that when they could just be with the guy one on one? And it's cause it's like a, first of all, it's like a family with the, with the girls in the house. We have like these strong bonds all together, which, you know, I think you're like, like, you're like, you're like an ethical R Kelly. <laughs> but, but I think it has some primitive roots. I mean, like we used to exist in tribal times, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, stuff like that. And also, so there's all this, like, it's like a, like an actual family. Um, but then at the same time, you know, we all like support each other emotionally. And then when we're having hard times and shit like that, but also besides that, it's just like super fun. We're also, we're always doing like adventures. We're always having like this girl over and this girl over. And like, like we have a girl coming tomorrow to like make dinner with the girls and, you know, they sleep over, we all go to the beach together. So it's like, it's, it's just like this fun environment and, and it's all like very normalized. And a lot of the girls say yeah. like, oh, we love coming here. But this Colombian girl, she's like, oh, we, I love coming over there. I feel so free. I feel like no one's judging me. Like I can just like dance on the pole and like, I feel sexy around you guys. And like, it's not like hippie style, like, oh, good vibes only. But everyone's just like very, <laughs> everyone's just very like chill, very, very cool. And like, um, you know, I get instantly with any like new girl we bring in, it's like instant social proof that, oh, we're, I have all these hot girls here. And, and it's, I'm not like, oh, I don't, I don't need you. I'm not saying stuff like that explicitly, but it's like, you can be part of this or you can not. And it's not, you know, no, there's no pressure for any girl to hook up. And the girls are like very, very like sweet with any new girl. They're like, oh, like, is it okay if I kiss you? Or like, oh, are you feeling comfortable? Like shit like that. And, you know, so the girls feel like really, there's never any like pressure, like, you know, we're, we're predatory. And it, it's kind of nice too, because the, they're always like making sure the girls are like super comfortable. And then that goes a long way. The girls have an amazing experience. And then uh, after we bang a new girl, we put them in a group chat. So it's like the girls in the house and the new girl in a group chat. So we have like eight or nine group chats on WhatsApp. And then we just send like sexy pictures of us together to these, to these girls. They send pictures to us. They're always like so excited to come back again. They're like, we, they're like, oh, I can't wait to see you guys again. And um, and we just set up set up these extra girls for like once a week as well. So it's really cool. There's like always three, some four, some five, some stuff happening. There's always new girls, and and the girls are starting to collect numbers on their own. They're cold approaching strangers even when they're not with me, and they're they're running their own online dating profiles. Like the one of the girls in the house, she got 14 numbers on her first day with her tinder it's just like an account looking for girls she got 14 phone numbers she was like running into a bunch of problems i'm like here use these scripts the same ones i give my students and then she just, just started outputting phone numbers and then she's like okay how do i set up the dates i'm like use these scripts and you know so but she's getting way extra compliance you know and i tell my students shoot for 15 to 20 numbers a week here she is pulling 14 numbers out of her ass on the first day so you know it's like it's like and we're looking to get like a second house or, or an even bigger house where we're all um, you know, where we have even more girls. So I, I, my dream or kind of the big goal all the way through was to create kind of like a Hugh Hefner type situation without paying the girls. So the only thing that I provide for them is I don't have them pay rent. A lot of them offered to pay rent because they have other jobs. Like the main chick is an engineer, like a civil engineer, but they just make shit money here. And the way I look at it, it's like my place that I, even before we moved the girls in, it was my place that I was paying for anyways. So I'm not, I don't make them pay rent, but I don't give them money. I don't buy them shit. You know, it's, it's they're pretty much on their own for all that stuff. Unless we like we go out to eat now and then and stuff like that, I'll pay for it. But, yeah, yeah, it's normal stuff. What's your next iteration of your business? So uh, paid traffic. So, so it's been doing very well over the past uh, six months, especially. And I'm getting the reputation as having the best offering, the best system by far. Usually when a guy comes through, he gets very good. And then he tells all his friends. 
and with the daily content, I'm very vocal about the results guys are getting and this and that. And I give lots of really good stuff away for free on my YouTube. And now we're moving into basically like scaling everything up, right? So I'm bringing in like some, you know, very skilled marketers. But, but again, I'm just trying to help as many guys as possible. I already have enough money to, to live off of and, and all that stuff. And I made, I made money before uh, getting into this field with, you know, with poker and with, with some stock stuff and this and that. So it's not really like a money grab play. It's more, I, I get a lot of satisfaction. See, usually the guy goes from like zero to hero and, and I hear all kinds of amazing stuff from most clients where, oh, I never, you know, I, I've wanted this life. My, my entire life is like my dream situation. Oh, I got a dream girlfriend. Oh, I have, most of the guys, one of the biggest feedback is they don't have enough time to see all the girls because it becomes so systematic very fast. With, with it, it's, it. you know, I'll even say it, 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 being in any sort of relationship takes work, right? I mean, as somebody who is constantly working on business development for the projects that I work on and I'm dedicated to, um, it becomes a balancing thing for me. And, and oftentimes I would rather just work on my businesses yep. rather than maintain a relationship. And I'm, you know, it I think a, as it is a lot of work. getting to different, it is a lot of work. Uh, as, as you as you move into different parts of your life, those values change, and I see them changing slightly for me. But traditionally, you know, uh, I would get in a relationship, and I would say, Ugh, I could I could build a business instead, right? Yep. And, and it's controllable. Um, there's a lot of moving parts in what you do, right? There's a lot of moving parts in dating, and it's fun. I mean, women are probably my favorite top, top five things I love, right? No, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Um, amazing. But maintaining a relationship with anyone, whether it's a woman or a friend, it takes work. Yep. And what you do to me, I, I'm impressed because it sounds exhausting, right? It sounds it like, a, like a lot of fucking work. It is. Uh, it is. Yeah. So do your students ever come to you and say, man, like this is... This is too much work. I got what I need. I'm good. I know how to do this now. I'm done. I just want one, or actually, I don't want any right now because just dealing with this, with with dealing with a relationship in their current life setting isn't conducive. Does that happen often? Yeah. I mean, well, not not like not so much like like just it starts to interfere with other areas of their life because once they get this, it tips very fast, and then they have an overload of girls coming to their schedule. And then it's easier to say, oh, I'll, I'd rather bang this hot chick than go to jujitsu. I'd rather bang this hot chick than go to the gym. I'd rather bang this hot chick than like whatever the fuck else they were going to do. And it very quickly starts to take over and guys hit me up. Oh, what, you know, what do I do? Like I, I had no girls before and now I have too many and I can't get other stuff done. I'm like, dude, it's just my job to get you good at the, at the system and, and get you able to get these girls. You're going to have to impose some limits and some self-discipline. And I don't want to be the one to tell them where to draw those lines. But they just have to have a healthy balance. And I definitely took it to the extreme. I mean, I, I purposely tried, yeah. to, tried to put most of my free time centered around either doing cold approach pickup, swiping on the apps, doing texting to work leads, being on dates or being with rotation girls. So that was like, you know, I was seeing like two to five girls a day for like the past 10 to 15 years. And I, whenever I'd have like a, a, a girlfriend or anything on the rotation, the, the hottest, coolest one, the number one slot, would always be bisexual and we, I've been doing the threesome stuff for like 10 years. I never did it to this extreme as I have, you know, in the past, you know, since last May where we did like 50 new, that's a little bit more hardcore. Uh, but we, I've systematized that as well. So I have like a, a very solid systematization to bring in threesomes with a bisexual main rotation girl or girlfriend. But yeah, I basically just tell them they have to put limits. Um, I'm basically helping them maximize the return from the time that they do invest into this stuff. And then it's up to them how much time they want to put in. And there's also some other solutions to offload the time. Like, for instance, a lot of the, the swiping on the online apps and the texting can be a little cumbersome to deal with every day. And you can outsource that to a virtual assistant or a virtual assistant team. So I have a bunch of clients that do that. They just hand over my scripts to, for online messaging and texting because there's no point in the, in the guy doing it himself, really, at the end of the day. Because, you know... It could be a robot. It could be, you know, some female assistant in the Philippines, which which some of the guys are using. So it doesn't really matter um, if they're doing that part, and that can help offload a lot of the time. 
And also with those scripts where the girl comes straight to the house, that saves like an hour for doing the public date. And then I have various strategies for, you know, using work as an excuse and stuff like that after they hook up, if they, if they want to have the girl leave and not, and not leave on bad terms, you know, so just, oh, I'd really like to keep hanging out, but some stuff came up for work. So there's a bunch of stuff like that that can help uh, minimize the time that they're putting in and, and still have those relationships and stuff like that. But yeah, it, it becomes high quality problems very fast. It's not, it's not, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to move this forward. It's how do I, all these roles. yeah, but then that allows them, yeah. to, that allows them to be picky. It also does wonders for their confidence because there's that whole paradox that once, um, you know, once you don't care anymore, like, cause you already have a bunch of girls, then the other girl, the other new girls sense that. And then it works even better with the new girls. So by virtue of them, like being able to do this and, and already having some girls on rotation, then other girls respond even better because they can sense that the guy doesn't like need this, need this. Whereas if he was never getting laid or hadn't gotten laid in a long time, there's more of this, Oh, I really need this to work kind of vibe. And the girls get turned off by that and it looks, it can look low value. So yeah, it's, it's a beautiful process, but I, I love uh, seeing each guy like come out. You know, we, we just had a guy, he's like, Oh, I banged my first 10, my first, he's like these are the hottest girls and this guy's like 46 he's like these are the hottest girls i've been in my life and i'm only like three weeks in you know so it, the result rate just happens so fast and, and so i think once we we scale up with paid traffic since there's so much real value in this product especially compared to all the other ones in the niche I, I really see this as being like light years ahead in terms of the the how well it works in terms of other stuff in the industry i think you know i'm basically sitting on a gold mine like i said this isn't a money grab but this is a very important problem for most guys that's largely unsolved. The, the, the products and services in the rest of the industry are mostly run by internet marketers or guys that are purposefully scamming. A lot of, the, a lot of their business models is just to put guys on a hamster wheel, overwhelm and confuse them. And I've heard reports from employees of these various companies saying that explicitly, that they've been directed to overwhelm and confuse the clients and actually mislead them so that they can c continue to return for the solution in quotes. And, and keep buying product. Like one of the major companies, Real Social Dynamics, they have 30 digital products and they all claim to solve the problem. But I, I, get, I see the aftermath of guys that go through those trainings time and time again. And the guy's usually more confused, more frustrated, all this stuff. And they've, they've tried with RSD for years and gotten nowhere or gone backwards in lots of cases. And they sell live programs now in packs of four, and, which is insane too, because you just only need one. <coughs> And I've talked to guys that have literally taken 12 RST boot camps and they don't know what to do in a nightclub, which I can explain in about 60 to 90 minutes in its entirety. Yeah. Uh, oh, you don't really need to make more programs. You have an all-in-one system yep. to help guys learn how to date better. That's the other, that's the other big draw. This is my, my eight-week mentorship is meant to be a permanent final solution. I'm teaching them everything they need to know about game in a very straightforward, practical, effective, efficient, and optimized way. And the whole goal is that I get them very good and max out their skills so that they don't need training from anyone ever again, not, not me either, right? So I still have some follow-on clients that want to, like, start doing over 100 a year consistently, that want to just stick to, like, nines and, and up. They want to start banging, like, strippers and, and waitresses and the, the really hot ones. Uh, how do they do that in those situations? How do they build up threesome rotation? So, so basically, I'll get guys uh, for repeat business that want to take it kind of the extreme. I, like I said, I just had a 300 lay count guy that joined the program. And he, he did a video on my channel showing all the areas where he upgraded his, his skills even further. And there was actually a whole bunch of big levelings up, even though he was already at 300 when he came to me. But basically, because he hadn't optimized a lot of the pieces like I had. So... The whole, the whole way through, it was, it was an evolutionary process where I was constantly trying to find people better than me at any part of the system on a macro and micro level. Who can keep the girls around better? Who's texting better? Who's, who's running their dates the smoothest? Who's, who's the best in the nightclubs? And I actively sought those guys out, which I rarely ever see. And that's how you master any, any uh, discipline, is you find people that are better than you at any given level, and you be humble about it, and you use it as a, an opportunity to get better. Most people have... I mean, I have a big ego, but most people, uh, they protect, you know, this is my way that I do it. And I don't want to look at these other people's way of doing it, even if it's better, because that'll challenge, that'll make me have to admit that I was doing something 
wrong or, or suboptimally. Whereas I've actually sought that out. And I think that a lot of that came from the philosophy studies where a position is only as good as the arguments behind it. So every position is here's my best you know, here's my best arguments at this time, but it's always subject to change if anyone can show you better arguments, which is how everything should be. So I, I looked for guys who are better than me in any area, but I also was constantly analyzing and scanning the whole system for weak spots. And, and as more data came in and as more things evolved, um, I was always looking, what can I, I drove a lot of optimizations and in, in innovations in as well. And a lot of it happened with split testing, like scientific method. I'm gonna try these 10 techs and I'm gonna put a bunch of data behind them okay, the, these are like the two or three winners. And now I try variations of these. And it was this iterative process until you arrive on this, okay, this is what's working the best. And here's the stats behind it. So if I have 10 girls willing to meet up and I put them through my come straight to the house text about half on average, you know, I, have, I have tons of data behind this, about half on average will just say yes straight away, come straight to the house. The other half will object. I don't go to a stranger's house that I just met. Um, you know, I, I'm not that kind of girl. I prefer to meet in public first. And then I have an objection response to that that converts another two or three out of those five objectors. So overall, about seven or eight out of 10 will come straight to the house. And that's a huge game changer because that, that's that's what allowed me to do 246 in mid-2017 20, to mid-2018. Because <clears throat> number one- hey, wait, wait, Jordan. So you, you have a system now. You have a system that works. The, yeah. I know we're, uh, we're, we're approaching time, but my, my last question to you is, where do you see yourself with this program or personally within the next five years? Um, I would say, let's see, um, in the next five years. So I really want to rise to the top of the dating space and be the number one offering. I mean, I already believe my, my system delivers the most results. And, that, and that's not just because I made it because our result rate is so high and so far beyond everyone else's in the, in the, in the space. Um, but I, the marketing kind of has to play catch up. I mean, I'm not the I'm not the most popular brand at the moment. And this and that. And a lot of the most popular brands have shit services. Unfortunately, those two things do not correlate, right? You know, I remember I, in San Francisco, I ate uh, at this amazing sushi restaurant, and it was like totally empty. It was like, to date like the best sushi I ever had. And uh, like a couple blocks down the road, there was some sushi chain that had like a line out the door, and it was it was a shit quality food. But it goes to show that the the marketing is a large part of the equation, right? I can get, um, you know, I, I can get a lot of satisfied customers and, and customer lifetime value, and I can train guys on live programs after they do the virtual training and vice versa, and, and you know, some year-long mentorship stuff down the road. But I've got to expose people to what I have to offer, and I and I have to do it in a way that uh, is appealing to them, and this and that. So. Um, kind of a little peek into the curtains is I'm bringing on a guy that's that's a really heavy hitter in the marketing world to act as the CMO, the chief marketing officer. And he basically did for marketing what I did for the pickup game. So he's a very analytical guy as well. And he had me flow chart out my entire business in terms of all the processes, in terms of all the people in the organization, in terms of all the, the tech stuff we're using and how everything flows together. He went through and analyzed it and he's saying, okay, here's all the gaps and there, and there's tons. And I, and I admit that I don't, you know, I was never trained in marketing and this and that, and I've had help from various places, but, um, I took, you know, I, I made it into a six figure a month business over the past year, uh, without any formal marketing training, just fr from YouTube organic traffic. So now we're like filling in all the gaps. So now we're looking at how can we take this from hundred K a month to 300 K a month with the lowest hanging fruit and this and that. And we're gonna to continue to scout from there. And I wanna emphasize though, it's not a money grab at all. He's also very passionate about helping men and men's improvement. So kind of our long-term vision is we wanna scale this to reach as many men as possible and help as many men as possible with this problem of how to get women uh, repeatedly. But then we also wanna uh, branch horizontally into uh, fringe niches. So then we'll have, uh, you know, we'll bring in a real fitness expert now here's how you maximize your fitness and here's a real, real no bullshit, uh, practical, straightforward advice and fitness. And then we'll bring in like, here's how you handle your fashion and style. Here's how you handle your confidence, charisma. We might have like a business training, this and that. So I want to have a brand that's total man optimization. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle brand. Yeah. That's why I called it. That's why I call it lifestyle instead of dating because the ultimate goal dating is going to be a major, uh, pillar and cornerstone. But then the whole idea is that we can reach broader audiences. Like fitness has a much wider appeal than, you know, pickup artist stuff, right? The POA community is, is a pretty small sub niche, 
but then people can come in through any part of those other funnels and then they see real there'll be real value being pushed for free they get a taste of that okay maybe i want to check out this course in fitness they get a whole bunch of real value from that and by the way i can show you how to get lots of hot girls right and i'm not going <clears> to <throat> claim to be an expert in those other fringe areas but we will have very strict quality controlled real experts handling all those things so the whole brand will be all about real like the, the highest value possible and centered around efficiency and effectiveness and, and ease to assimilate into their life Absolutely. And so the man can become like a full well-rounded man uh and, and you know he'll want to he'll want to buy everything that we have to offer and it'll all have a lot of real value behind it so that's kind of the the five-year plan um and really the only bottlenecks to get there are just going to be you know as we scale traffic do we have enough guys on the phones that can speak to all the, the interested customers and then do we have enough coaches to run you know the the virtual programs the live programs etc so i'm already organizing a, a team of, of coaches behind the scenes that to handle this increasing demand we already have a bunch of guys that can handle the phone calls behind the scenes and we're dialing out the traffic stuff so it's it's going to be an explosion uh, very soon, I think within the next six months, uh, where there's going to be a, yeah, man. By, by this, I already 10 X, uh, things from, from where it was at last year. And now I'm hoping to do another 10 X in, in one to three years as well. And, and it's, you know, it, it's just the nature of an evolutionary progression. So I'm just plugging in the right players and, and the right things. And, and it definitely helps a lot to have made different networking connections and stuff, you know, even like yourself, like we're talking about doing uh, some advertising as well together and um <clears throat> not, that's not top secret super <laughs> secret skillful stuff that's gonna work it's gonna be nuts and i will say once we we prove that that out at uh, that traffic channel that we're gonna optimize is so out of left field no one's gonna expect it i think it'll be a very cool case study and, and with that right yep. with the other pillars of your lifestyle business the same people we would go after for dating would want to learn how to be more fit. We yep. want to learn how to eat healthier. We want to learn how to manage the money too. better. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It all it, it, it all comes together. John, um, you know, I'm I'm going to be joining you on, on your podcast here shortly. But thank you for joining us here at Flow. It's been fun, right? Good little conversation. Yeah. Might have to come down to Brazil and we'll do a, a live stream together while, while I'm in your house. We'll see all the magic that's made there. <laughs> like stains on the on the couches and stuff. You gotta watch where you... Where you <laughs> 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 oh, right, it, it get, dude, it gets, it gets crazy. You. Like, because with the stripper pole and stuff, we've got like flashing lights. It's almost like a mini club in here. And the, and the chick's it, it's I, sometimes I even though even though I've seen like all kinds of crazy shit in the game over all these years, I, I sometimes I step back and I am I'm, I'm like in awe. Like when, when we brought like the two chicks I was talking about home from the club, one of them already knew how to pole dance because she had been doing one on one lessons for fitness and all this stuff, and she literally like strips down and just like hops up on the pole. The, the other girls start taking off all their clothes, and there's like there's like four naked Brazilians just you know all just like making out and jumping on the pole and shit. And then, and then, and then you've got guys in my space that are like, "Oh, it's completely beta move to live with a woman if you're not if you're not like married to her, or, or it's completely beta move to, uh, you know, to count how many girls you've been." And there's all these guys that are trying to like hate on the on the lifestyle that I'm doing, but it, at the end of the day, it's pretty much every guy's, oh, well, every guy's dream. Yeah, we'll take a deeper look at that. I, I I'm dedicated now to, to fly down to Brazil and do episode two in the house. See what it's all about, and it should be very fun. Yeah, uh, John. Let me, let me just shout out. My, so much. Uh, let me just shout out my channel. I shout it out. Yeah. yeah so, so uh, for there's almost like 600 uh, free content videos at John Anthony Lifestyle. Uh, that's the YouTube channel, and I think you'll probably have like the, the link in the description or something like that right. in the bottom there. And then uh, the the eight week mentorship course. It's PlatinumDatingSystem.com. If you go to that website, there's uh, there's details there, and you can basically jump on a free 30 minute call, and we'll go over all the the structure of where you're at and, and how we would get you to your goals and, and fix all the problems and give you an optimized dating system in, in two months. So and it usually happens by like week two or three guys are already like fucking tearing it up. That's, that's usually what happens. That, that's And that was the whole goal. I spent like three years building the training system, just getting every little piece so that we can just take a guy no matter what his level is and just have him absolutely crushing. And, you know, there's, there's little things that have to play catch up, you know, like his, what he thinks is possible and his views about himself and stuff like that. But, 
Uh, there's nothing like you know throwing a whole bunch of hot girls on dates with him, you know, when he, when he's like terrified to break him out of that <laughs> stuff. So, uh, so yeah, we're we're proud of that, and and uh, yeah, looking forward to having you on on my channel as well because you've got a lot of interesting uh, life. Hey, stories I have there. an interesting life. <laughs> put it that way, an interesting life. I was, for sure. I was a little, I was a little <laughs> jealous. I was a little jealous when you got Lily. I was already flown away, but yeah, I'm a, I'm, I got it tattooed on me. I'm a lover boy. I like, you know, <laughs> you got her name on. <laughs> <me>? <laughs> no, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, you guys, you guys got too. a little serious at one point. I remember. He's gonna move, and I was like, I shouldn't do that. That would, that would be a bad thing. Well, that's yeah, we that's, a cool, that's a cool claim to fame. To uh, you banged the. She was like number one cam girl of 2015 or 2014 or something like that. Talk about that on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right brother. Thanks, thanks for having me Thank on. you Appreciate so much. It. All right. Of course. All right, later. Some do it for the income, but we do it for the outcome. Some of us are active, while others just let their mouth run. No doubt, son, this is not just about fun. We will not be outdone by these cowards who shout scum.